Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things continuing on with project number two using the bundle Happiness Abounds as well as its coordinating paper. Again, I am using the catalog page one and the second card is this card up here in the upper right that uses the notebook, the torn notebook paper effect. I have changed the colors, not as much as I changed the colors on yesterday's card. Here it is. What have we got? I went ahead and made a simpler bow that doesn't have multiple loops. So it's a single loop of the quarter inch seam binding crinkle ribbon that is retiring. It uses my Hobby Lobby twine with the wrap of the, the glinty Aurora Borealis look. And then it uses purple thread. Again, only one loop of the Baker's twine and I see three loops of the purple. So I just didn't want this bow to be as big and fluffy. And I used a different background paper that is not yellow, green, light blue. It is instead yellow, green, blue, and fuchsia going into Orchid Oasis. I do have the uh, more purpley toned flower as well as the more blue toned flower on here. I again used a happy birthday that was stamped in Starry Sky on a piece of the colored cardstock that is a little more orangey yellow than the lemon yellow I see down at the bottom. And like yesterday's card, which I have sitting right here, I decided to carry through. Um, there was this cute little whimsical flower that has a little stem and I was able to die cut two of them and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and put that just on the bottom of each page at, kind of as a signature for my version of the card and sometimes it's fun to go ahead and just add one sometimes I'll do like a little heart or a particular uh, maybe a 3d uh, embellishment in the bottom right or bottom left corner so that is another fun technique to consider adding to your projects my mom happens to do, she has a dog paw stamp, that's a punch, and on the inside of every one of her cards will be that punch, and it punches through front to back, so that when you open it up, which this one I have not decorated yet, uh, the, the paw will be on every one of her cards, and I, I vary mine, sometimes I don't do anything like that, but in this particular case, I saw these um, cards could have this one element on both of them. And if I were to do a couple more, I might try to go ahead and do like a set of four. And then that could be given away as a birthday card set to somebody. So another element on this card, I did not distress the note paper. I did do stamping in granny apple green and garden green of leaves, which at the bottom here, you can see my leaves do show through, but I did my goal with the bow was to try not to cover all of the stamping, but I pretty much covered the stamping. If I were to make sure that this card was sent and I could put tack down these two white um, ends, I think I would have a better chance of this green stamp showing because if I don't tack these down with like a dot, it'll end up shoving to the right maybe when I put it in the envelope and then you won't see it. So that's something that before I actually finish this card off and put it away to be given later, either sent uh, by myself, sold perhaps, or sent off to a Paper Pumpkin Perks customer, I, I might go ahead and tack these down. So when I share these cards with you and they are not 100% complete, they go in a place in a box called to finish and then I pull them out at a later date and I get them all finished I wait till I have like a whole bunch of them and then I will spend like a session a crafting session getting them finished all at once and I am curious let me know what your tactic is do you finish your cards 100% right then and there and then immediately put them away in your stash or do you have an intermediate place like I do in a to finish? And the reason why I do that is I am a very slow crafter. So I try not to spend so much time crafting that I don't get anything else done. So that's why I have just over the years decided that the stopping point for me is when I have everything tacked down on a card, but there might be 20% left and the envelope to do, 
I will just put it away so that I don't get burned out on that project and then I'll come back to it and finish it later. That's all I've got for today. If you have any questions, oh wait, I have one last thing. I just want to share that you probably noticed yesterday when I shared the uh, new in colors, the yellow, which I don't have the color name. I did not grab it. It is not handy. Let's see if I can find it really quickly for you. I'm grabbing my full size ink pads uh, for the first time since I've been a demonstrator. I actually own the ink pads. I don't have all of them yet, but I did grab a chunk. So mini reveal time. These are the five in colors. Pebbled Path, which I would call a little brownish gray. Copper Clay, which is, boy, it's a really pretty uh, reddish orange with a little gray. Boho Blue, which you saw the uh, dots yesterday for the Boho Blue on the previous project. Ah, Wild Wheat. So this yellowy, this beautiful grayish yellow is actually called Wild Wheat. And to me, it looks like... Um, one of the my favorite Copic colors is like, boy, uh, Y27, I think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Y28. And it is like a the goldish glinting yellow. And then the final color is Moody Mauve. Probably my least favorite. To me, this Moody Mauve is almost like the 80s Mauve, which I was, when I first got married, it, which was 1990, the tail end of the whole mauve and country blue phase of my life. Uh, but this this is a little different because it has that gray in it. All of these tones have kind of a, a dusty, grayish, uh, mellow, almost distressed tinting to them that I actually really like. So that is a mini reveal on what's coming. And I've talked about what is retiring on here. I think I'm good. That's all I've got. Be sure to do all the YouTube things. You can add your comments, like, share, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.